Hello everyone. Today I'll be talking about the first part of chapter one, moles and equation uh, for chemistry A level IG. Uh, in this video, I will be uh, explaining matter and the classification of matter, standard form and its significant figures, relative atomic mass, mole, and Avogadro's number. Uh, I will also provide a link for the uh, download uh, for downloading the material. I will also provide uh, a link in the description of the video for the, uh, for downloading the material and the website uh, link where you can watch and uh, download the material. So first, chemistry is a stu is a study of the properties of matter, and the matter is actually any substance that we can feel, see, or touch, such as air, water. All those things surround uh, surrounding you is actually a matter. Matter is composed of atoms. So John Dal Dalton proposed a theory in which he said any matter is composed of a smaller particles and he named those particles atoms. Those atoms of the same element will have the same properties and they will have the same um, masses but different element will have different atoms and the mass of, this, uh, different, uh, of those uh, atoms will be different. He also said uh, atoms cannot be created, neither destroyed. Classification of matter. So matter uh, is classified into element, compound, or mixture. In case of element, uh, the element uh, contains one type of atoms. Uh, example for that would be hydrogen, oxygen or iron uh, so we have the hydrogen uh, is composed of two uh, hydrogen atoms oxygen contains two oxygen atoms while iron contain uh, one uh, contains one iron atom all elements uh, all uh, what is written in periodic table is actually elements compound uh, is combo uh, is made of uh, atoms of different elements that is bonded together chemically with a fixed ratio example for that would be something like water so I have water it's composed of uh, element hydrogen and element oxygen with a fixed ratio to to one so I have two hydrogen atoms and I have one oxygen atoms to form uh, H2O which my compound you could see that the properties of my um, of the uh, hydrogen which is a gas and oxygen which uh, is a gas is different from my compound which is uh, which is formed which is water which is liquid so the, uh, this means the properties, the chemical and physical properties of the compound is different from its parent elements. In case of mixture, it's similar to compound. Uh, uh, it is composed of uh, more than one element, um, but uh, they are binded together uh, physically. So instead of the chemical bond that bonded uh, uh, atom uh, elements together in, uh, like in case of compound in here it is only physically bonded similar uh, example for that is sea water you could see that if you heated sea water uh, the water would be separated from the salts uh, uh, and uh, we only use the physical means for that which was the uh, heating uh, process also brass alloy is considered to be mixture in that case in, in case of brass alloy it is composed of copper element and zinc element binded together uh, uh, physically matter uh, the properties of matter is classified into either extensive properties or intensive properties the extensive properties depend on how much matter uh, involved, but intensive properties doesn't depend on how much material involved. Uh, example for extensive property, uh, properties would be uh, something like mass and volume. These two properties depend on how much material do I have. If I looked at um, one cup of water, would be different from 
one big bottle of water so the mass of this one cup will be different from the big bottle uh, the, uh, the mass of the big bottle so in here we have different mass I also have different volume while in case of intensive properties it doesn't depend on how much material involved example for uh, those uh, properties uh, density temperature and the chemical properties You could see that uh, the density of the one cup of water is the same as the one bottle of water. So it doesn't matter how much material do I have. Uh, if I have uh, one cup, it's similar to uh, if I have half liter, it's equal to one liter. Both of them ha would, sh would uh, show the same density. So the density of water is uh, characterized for water and it doesn't uh, change if I change it the mass. Also, uh, the temperature if I boiled uh, this uh, this uh, two amount of water both of them will boil at 100 degrees centigrade which means temperature is intensive properties uh, properties that doesn't depend on how much material do I have if you looked uh, at matter uh, like we said before it is composed of element or compound Actually, element itself is divided into two categories. Either it is only single atom, something like iron or copper, or it is more than one uh, atom, although they are similar, uh, one uh, of the same type. So something uh, we will name them molecules. So those molecules would be more than one atom, but they are made of the same element, something like oxygen. I have two atoms of oxygen. Compound, uh, it's either classified into ions. Example for that would be NaCl. Um, it is atoms that carry uh, carry electrical charge. So we could see that sodium carry positive charge and the chlorine carry carries uh, negative charge. Uh, compounds also uh, can be considered to uh, be molecules. In that case, molecules uh, means it is made of more than one uh, type of atoms uh, binded together, but they are not electrically charged. Similar uh, example for that would be water. Moving from that, we will talk about the standard form. A standard uh, form is the method that we uh, uh, scientists write numbers. Uh, it consists of two parts. Uh, first part which would be number from 1 to 10 the second part will be 10 to the power either positive or negative let's take an example if I looked at 2000 and I wanted to write it using a standard form in that case I would write 2 because I need to divide this number into two parts first part will be number between 1 and 10 which is 2 and the second one would be 10 to the power 3 another example if I have um, 0 0.002 in that case I have fraction so if I wanted to write it using the standard form I will write first number l that lies between 1 and 10 which is 2 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3 so if I have a point I will start moving that in that direction the right direction I will uh, add minus uh, uh, to the power uh, 10 while if I moved to that direction which is the left direction I will write uh, positive uh, power to the 10 significant figures it's also a method used to write physical quantities in numbers where the accuracy of the measurement is shown by the number of significant figures to which quantity is quoted what I mean by that if I looked here if I have two cylinder uh, one of them uh, graduated cylinder uh, one of them is 100 uh, graduated cylinder and the other one is only 10 graduated cylinder and I put around 8 centimeter or 8 uh, mil in this cylinder in both cylinders if I looked at this 8 mil if I try to describe them in that case of the 100 uh, 
middle cylinder it will be eight which means my uh, error should uh, would be between positive of negative one so either i have t uh, nine mil or i have seven mil so the error here lies between seven and the nine but if i use the smaller graduate uh, graduated cylinder like uh, here in case of 10 so if i use this 10 this means i'm taking uh, 8.0 mil and my error would lie between 0.1 mil so the error here would be lying between 0 .0, uh, 0.1 and 7.9 so we could see that we minimized the uh, the error this is what we call the accuracy so the accuracy of this read of this read, uh, reading will be more uh, of this reading will be more accurate than this reading also if i use something even more um uh, more uh, accurate like a period that can uh, uh can, uh, that we can take up t uh, up to 8.00 this means my accuracy will lie between o uh, positive or negative 0.01 mil so if i minimize the size of my uh, graduating cylinder this means i'm maximizing my accuracy because instead of this graduating cylinder in in, in that case it it is reading each error is reading one mil while here each reading is only reading a point mil N uh, so for any significant figures uh, if I have something like six positive or negative uh, one this means my error uh, or uh, the accuracy lies between five and seven while if I wrote it in that way 6.0 this means my accuracy lies between positive or negative 0.1 this means 5.9 and 6.1 any number is not zero in significant figures is uh, significant which means if I wrote 82 this means I have two significant numbers if I, I wrote 1.2 this means 1.2 is a significant uh, two significant numbers so here I have two significant number and uh, here I have two significant number uh, numbers zero between non zeros are significant if I wrote this number and I wanted to uh, count how many significant uh, numbers do I have so I have one two three four five so those zeros between any numbers will be considered as significant numbers so I have one two three four five five significant numbers zero on the left is not significant so any zeros would be in that left hand side would be non-significant numbers so if i wanted to uh, count here how many significant number do i have so i have only one significant number which is the eight for numbers greater than one zero on the right of decimal point count significant which means if i have here something like this zero it is on the right hand side and it's not on the left like the other time so first i have this zero which lies between two numbers so it's a significant number so when i count those significant number i have one two three four and i will count this number which is five significant number also for any number that is less than zero the zero between numbers and uh, on the right are counted to be significant uh, if I looked here, I uh, I have how many significant number? So I have this zero between the nine and five, and I have this zero, and I have these two zeros. First two zeros, I'm not gonna count because I said any zeros on the left is not counted, and I have this nine zero nine, uh, five zero. So those are the significant numbers. So I have four significant numbers. Uh, numbers without decimal point and zeros on the right may or may not count as significant. Something like 400, I will write it. Uh, it may have one significant number, two significant numbers, or three significant numbers. In that case, uh, I can describe it as four multiplied by 10 to the power, uh, uh, 10 to the power two. Rounding up the numbers, so I round up any fraction that lies between 1 and 4 by cancelling them but if I have from 5 to 9 I will add point let's take a uh, I will add 1 so let's take an example if I would if I wanted to round up this number to 4 significant numbers so this means I will take 
one, two, three, four. So I have to stop at this eight. I have this four, which is below the five. So I'm not gonna count them. So I, uh, if I rounded these to four significant numbers, this means I have five to six point eight. Now, if I wanted to round it to three significant numbers, if I wanted to round it to see it's three significant numbers, it's only these three numbers. So I will take those three. So I have to look here and I could see that eight lies between five and the nine. So if I rounded this one, this means I need to add one to the six. So my three significant number would be five, two and seven. Now let's round this number to two significant numbers. So if I wanted to count uh, to round it uh, to two significant numbers, this means I have to add um, uh, one because six lies between five and nine. So I will have to add one to the two. So I have five, three. And I write zero. It's also uh, it's not considered to be significant, like we said in that uh, part. It's not significant numbers, but uh, just to write it in a correct way, this means it's 530. So if I write, if I'm rounding 526, I round it to 530. The masses of atoms and the molecules. Atoms are uh, very tiny that cannot uh, we cannot uh, recognize their masses directly. So we have to compare them to the mass of something that we can calculate. So at the beginning, uh, scientists use uh, hydrogen to compare the, uh, uh, the mass of any element to the mass of uh, any atom to the mass of hydrogen. But they found out that actually hydrogen have three uh, types of isotopes. So they used another uh, element which was carbon. Carbon also carbon have two isotopes, carbon 12 and the carbon 13. Uh, the, uh, the carbon-12 uh, abundance is actually 99% uh, 99, uh, comparing to uh, percent abundance of the carbon-13, which is 1%. So they used uh, carbon instead of hydrogen to describe the mass of any element. So any uh, element, the mass of any element will be uh, the uh, relative atomic mass of how heavy uh, any atom comparing to 1 over 12 mass of carbon atom. The relative mass can be measured using mass spectrometer. Of course, the relative atomic mass would be a dimensionless uh, unit because it's uh, actually a ratio uh, between uh, the, two, uh, the two element, the carbon and the uh, element that we need to find out. Let's take an example. Um, if I want to know the relative atomic mass of hydrogen, so I know that is the mass of hydrogen, uh, one atom of hydrogen is actually 0.8% comparing to uh, carbon-12 atom. So if I wanted to know the uh, atom, uh, the mass of uh, hydrogen atom, it would be 8.4 divi uh, divided by 100 because I have here a percent multiplied by 12 which is the uh, mass of one carbon atom. This would give me 1.008. So we can also use the relation uh, that uh, says uh, the mass of, uh, of all isotopes by the percent abundance would give me the relative atomic mass. So if I wanted to uh, obtain uh, the carbon, uh, if I looked at uh, this example, the carbon has two isotopes, 12 and 13, with percent abundance 99% and 1% uh, and 1% wha uh, respectively. What is the relative atomic mass of carbon? So uh, my relative atomic uh, mass of carbon would be equal to 12 multiplied by its uh, percent abundance, which is 99 divided by 100, plus, I mean here by all, is the sum, the 13, the other isotope, which is the 13, multiplied by the uh, percent abundance, which is 1 divided by 100. This would be equal to 12. Example, what is the amount in moles of carbon in 30 grams of carbon? So my uh, given uh, uh, information is the mass and what I want to know is the mole. So the, gr uh, the moles of 
carbon would be equal to like we said which is n it would be equal m over m capital so moles of carbon would be equal the 30 grams I'm given multiplied by if one mole of carbon contains 12 grams of carbon how many moles I have in 30 grams this would be equal to point uh, 2.5 moles so we could see that if I cancel this unit the grams with the grams I end up with the desired unit which is the mole another example calculate the amount in grams of 0.3 mole of oxygen so this time I'm given the moles and I want to know the mass so the mass of oxygen would be equal to the given unit which is 0.3 mole multiplied by uh, if I have 16 grams of oxygen in each one mole of oxygen this means I have 4.8 grams in 0.3 mole if I'm I want to make sure my answer is right if I cancel the mole with the mole I end up with the desired unit now moving to Avogadro's number the number of atoms is actually equal to the Avogadro's number multiplied the number of moles let's take an example how many hydrogen atoms uh, are there in one point mole uh, moles of hydrogen atoms so what I need now is what the number of atoms so I'm giving 1.5 1 uh, mole so if I write here the conversion factor if each mole if I know that contains the Avogadro's number which is 6.0 multiplied by 10 to the power 23 exists in uh, one mole if this number of atoms exists in one mole so 1.5 contains how many atoms it would be equal to 2 point, uh, 9.0 multiplied by 10 to the power 23 atoms Another example, calculate the amount of substance in, mole, uh, in moles in a sample of uranium that contains 1.3 multiplied by 10 to the power 25 atoms. So I have to, uh, to convert, in that case I have to convert atoms of uranium into moles of uranium. So what I need is a mole of uranium would be equal to the given unit which is 1.3 multiplied by 10 to the power 25 so I have this in atoms if I know that in, the, uh, in each one mole I have 6.0 I've got this number by 10 to the power 23 atoms so how many moles do I have it will be equal to if I calculated this it will be equal to uh, 21.7 mole now let's take another uh, another example calculate the amount of substance in moles uh, of a sample of chlorine that contains this number of atoms it's similar to uh, the previous one so now I have the number of atoms so if I want the moles of fluorine would be equal to the number of atoms 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 21 which is the desired uh, is a given unit atoms multiplied by the, uh, the conversion factor if I have in each mole I have Avogadro's number of atoms 6 multiplied by 10 to the power 23 atoms this would be equal to 8.3 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3 mole this mean in each uh, in each 
uh, multiplied by 10 to the power uh, minus 3, I have 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 21 atoms. My next video will be about the atomic symbols and the formula. Uh, see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.